you know, language of uh, Afenyo Mark in the Honorable Afenyo Mark in, in attacking the speaker, you know, mm -hmm. uh, was unparliamentary, mm -hmm. very uncultured. You know, and this is the first time that I'm seeing live an MP attack the Speaker of Parliament using unparliamentary language, using invectives, using assaulting, you know, the Speaker's character and, you know, playing to the gallery. It's unwarranted. It's uncalled for. And uh, I'm glad that the Honorable Afenyo Marki himself re re recognized the need for decency. Now, a majority leader ought not, ought not launch an assault on the citadel of parliament uh, merely because they disagree with the speaker. When he was addressing the media, the whole world was watching. This is not, you know, the way a leader, the majority leader, should address the right honorable speaker. And I think that um, the, 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 the major, majority leader or minority leader mm -hmm. right, should apologize to the whole nation, not even to the speaker, mm. to the nation. Because what he has done will forever remain a scar on the conscience you know, of the nation. It's the first time. The first time that I'm seeing you know, such an unruly behavior on the part of you know, a majority leader. Mm -hmm. A majority leader carries the whole nation. They become the conscience you know, of the majority with the people, the representatives. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if there is a matter, you know, a, a burning issue in parliament that requires uh, maturity, the wisdom of the elderly, gray people to purchase men's opinion, that is what, you know, ought to be done. Not to, you know, play to the guy by attacking the speaker, calling the speaker all sorts of names and saying that he's wreaking havoc on the nation. No speaker will, you know, wreak havoc on his own nation. What for? You see, now, viewers will recall the greatest respect. Uh, it was not the, the, the speakers, whether it was a ruling or an opinion or a communication, you know, that uh, sparked of the fire. It was the, the announcement or the pronouncement of the MPP Koko that they will boycott parliament until the final determination of the suit before the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And the suit has not been finally disposed of. And therefore, as far as I'm concerned, you know, they, they, they have said they will not go. Right. So let us wait until the 11th of this month. But they, they, they asked the, you know, the speaker to reconvene parliament. Yes, it was a laughable, you know, request they made. If you, you see, you say that uh, the, the Supreme Court, you know, has the most say in this matter. I beg to differ. The Supreme Court doesn't have any say, you know, in this political tussle that is going on between the minority. No, you don't think it's a legal tussle? No. No. It is devoid of any constitutional, you know, legality, you know, to send it to the Supreme Court. Ah, well, the Chief Justice ah, thinks otherwise. Uh, she's been able to, you know, find in the constitution that even parliament is subject to them. She went on to that say not added, even the... That has added to the, the problem. executive. How so? Yeah, because it is sometimes... Uh, in trying to find a solution to a problem, you rather create more problems. The, somebody runs to the Supreme Court. We have an issue in the Supreme Court. Who are the parties in the first place? So the Supreme Court you know, saw one party or recognized one party, Afenyo Markin. Who were the other parties? They the, said uh, the, the speaker. The speaker. The speaker ought not have been a party. Under the Constitution, under Article 88, Clause 5 of the Constitution, the Attorney General is the nominal defendant. Hmm. And since the Attorney General had not been served, 
there was no defendant properly before the Supreme Court. And that is why I have kept persistently to say that the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court had not been properly invoked because there was only one party you need to, to tango. There must be two parties before the Supreme Court. Now, where the Constitution specifies a party, the Supreme Court ought to respect that. 